All right, so we're back out here with the cat skid steer, and I've been kind of going through things and just cleaning things up. I cleaned the inside of the cab a little bit. Um, there's only so much I could do because it's really cold here right now, and I can't really get the hose out and get this thing out and spray it down. But, I mean, overall, it's, it's very clean. I'm very happy with the condition of it. There are just a few things I want to clean up, and I'm going to do whatever I can, um, you know, in the garage here. Uh, just with some rags and I got my little vacuum here. I'm trying to just clean up what I can. Um, I know it's a machine that's going to get dirty, obviously. Um, but, you know, taking care of your things will really make it last a lot longer. I already had gone through and kind of pulled out the air filters just to see what condition it was in. It was actually pretty good. Um, this thing had been serviced, I think, about 150 hours ago. So, obviously, it's still pretty good. Um, but what I'm doing actually today is I want to clean out the um, crankcase um, vent. So we're just going to open this up here. I already kind of had it open to start a little bit, but I figured I'm going to make a little video on this. So open up the back here. And then this is, and again, just so if anyone's wondering, this is the model 226B3. Um, a 2012, so a lot of the different models are going to be the same. But for this one... Um, this is the setup. Swing the door open and the radiator and all that is actually able to lift right up to give you full access. Um, I had originally been looking at Bobcats, as I mentioned in a previous video, and it looked like they had a lot more access um, from photos I've been looking at, which kind of leaned me away from looking at these cats. But I, I, you know, I just didn't know enough and I didn't realize that um, this whole radiator swings up and you could get access to everything, the turbo, the whole top of the motor. I mean, basically you could reach in there and get access to every single thing um i obviously didn't want to have to pull a motor out or do something major to get to any of this stuff so um there is a latch that's sort of hidden up under here you just pull this i'm doing this with one hand with the camera so it's a little tricky but pull that latch excuse me for a second and you just lift up and that swings up you can actually see now i'll step back so you can see you have access to the entire top of the motor. You can, there's tons of room in here to be able to reach in. Like I said, the entire turbocharger, if you had to replace that, you could get to it. So what we're focusing on today is right here. I'd already kind of actually came in here with, was kind of packed with some dust and grease. I chipped away as much as I can. It came off really easy. It just flaked off with a screwdriver. Didn't want to do any damage. So I just lightly broke it off. I took the vacuum cleaner and I just... Uh, vacuumed up what I could. I loosened up this clamp right here. So we're going to basically go ahead and just take this thing apart. If you look in the manual, it actually says that you should service thing service this every once in a while. I don't remember how many hours, but it's something you definitely want to clean because that's going to that's going to make this motor last longer. If you were to let this sit and build up with goop inside, I mean, we'll see what condition it's in, but that's a that's a, that's a component that you definitely want to take care of. So I'm just going to mount this camera up here. And see if we could get this thing apart easy enough so like I said all I did really before was come in here with a screwdriver loosened up this hose clamp pulled that back I'm gonna wait to take that off because I actually just want to see what kind of condition this is in before I pull that apart um, I got a socket right here to take these and it looks like there's just four bolts right here on top they actually are extremely loose I don't know if they need to be torqued down to anything specific or maybe they just weren't tightened down at one point but they are extremely easy to take off so just see if we can get these off I'm actually going to turn on my headlamp here I don't know if that's going to screw with the camera a little bit but I really don't want to lose any of these screws, so let's make sure I'm going to actually set these screws down as I take them out, because that is the absolute worst thing is when you drop one of these, and these are obviously a special screw, so might not be able to just run to the hardware store quick and replace that if I lose one. The third one. All right, let's get this last one out. And I'm guessing... Get this last screw out. I'm guessing what I want to do here is be very careful because I don't know what kind of opening this leads to. There's probably a spring in here and a gasket. I don't want to screw that up either. So 
So I'm going to just actually look real close in here. I don't want to damage this gasket. Okay, it looks like there's actually a little gasket actually seals over the top of this. So we want to pull that back. So that way we're not damaging that. I'm sure it's easily replaceable, but let's see if we could save everything coming. Okay, so there's our spring. There's the plate, top plate. We're going to go ahead and clean all these components, but we're going to get everything out of here. So again, just be very careful. Set everything to the side. You don't want to drop anything in here. So this diaphragm comes out. i got to be really careful with this gas because I really don't want to damage it. Yeah, let's see it's definitely dirty in here so I'm gonna go and get a razor blade or a small scraper to be able to pry this thing out all right so we got a little blade here I'm gonna try and just get this under it's not necessarily you know it's not like it's glued down or anything but just from it sitting there it definitely had some it's being stuck down just by some stuff that's around here yep so all right, well, I can see already there's definitely some buildup in there. So I'm glad I'm definitely cleaning this. Looks like it's about due. This is the other side of that gasket. I make sure that that little lip is up. Just take your time. Definitely don't want to rush this, so you'll be heading to the dealership to find this to replace it. Just go real slow around the edge. Looks like all four sides have that lip on it. It's definitely testing your patience. It's almost free. All right, so there it is. Be very careful. I'm just going to lift this up out of here. Just flip this over. Yeah, so it's just basically the rubber gasket along. It's got some uh, some buildup on there for sure. I'm going to peek down in there with my light. Sort of see what we got going on. So basically what's in there is nothing more than a little sort of silver screen down in there. Uh, just to keep the oil from splashing out. Um, it's all pretty clean, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and wipe out you know, a little bit of what I see in there. It's really not bad. Not a ton of buildup. It's, it's no more than I kind of expected, but it's good to sort of look in here and see what you're working with. So um, I'll wipe this out. And then what I'll do is take the rubber diaphragm, get that cleaned up. Uh, just, you know, a little bit of a mild solvent cleaner. You know, you don't want anything that's going to attack the rubber. Um, I'm going to pull this hose out and sort of just get this all cleaned up. All right, so after we clean this top edge here, I also have cleaned up the rubber diaphragm um, you know it doesn't have to be perfect we're gonna obviously get in here after a certain amount of time and and sort of maintain this every so often so that's pretty much it you know it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect it's gonna just get dirty again but obviously get off as much as it can just just try not to damage this that's the most important thing um, go ahead and sort of fit that back on there and we're also going to wipe down the top plate. You know, while this is out, I'm going to get all this stuff off of there. I mean, we're going to go ahead and wash this eventually after we degreaser and stuff. But while it's off, I might as well get off the big chunks that I can. Especially, you don't want to be putting this thing back on and, you know, dirt drops down in there. I mean, that's definitely something you don't want to do. All right, so I have also gone and cleaned up this top plate here. Um, top's not actually absolutely perfect, but as I said, we'll, we'll clean all this off at a later date, but I did, uh, clean down with some soap and water and I actually, 
wash it off with some lacquer thinner too, just to get any of the rest of the stuff off. So when you're putting this back together, just be careful to make sure that you're lining up these little tabs that are around here. You could actually put this on first. And just make sure that they're snug. They actually kind of grip onto there. I'm sure that's just so that when you actually place this down on there, that it doesn't fall off and you know it stays well aligned. And just make sure that everything's actually you know sealed up. This gasket is not 100%. I mean, it's definitely got a little bit of wear to it. So that's something I actually might just go ahead and order now so that next time we get in here and change it. I mean, it's definitely in good enough shape or it's not going to leak. But, you know, just to keep maintenance up on this, I'll just go ahead and order one so we have it. Um, so you don't want to forget about the spring, of course. Um, let's see. So we're going to set that. So as I said... Before you go ahead and get that gasket on don't forget put the spring in it's gonna line up it's kind of gonna sit on top of that um, uh, dented piece right there so you set the spring on it sort of holds it in place and then carefully make sure that it's this cup basically holds the spring so you could go ahead and you could probably do it either way you could either put that into the cup first the spring let's try it that way just to see which one works better uh, if you set the spring into the cup, then line up the dent on there. You can hold it all together while you line up the rubber. So then go ahead, as we said, and snap these into place. And that does really hold it all together quite nice. You can actually sort of let it spring up and down and just to see if it works. And it definitely does. So... We'll go ahead, just double check, make sure it's all lined up, and set it back on top. And then basically all that's left is just putting the screws back in. Um, I did notice these were extremely loose when, when I went to take them out. So, I mean, it, it's not going to take much at all to squeeze that gasket. It's very thin. Um, I'm just going to snug them a little bit more just to make sure, but you definitely don't want to snap one of these and you're dealing with another, yet another problem. So get those screws in, go ahead in my socket and just kind of we'll hold this plate down so it doesn't bounce around. Just kind of give those a hand snug and always just tighten your bolts across from each other so that you know it's kind of going on straight. down and I'll just take my socket put that on there and just give it a tiny little I mean I, these are very very delicate and you're you're squeezing a tiny rubber gasket so yeah that's that's perfect about there so I'm actually I was going to take this hose off here um, I was able to look in there and see that nothing's really kind of bound up there's nothing stuck in the hose so I'm actually just going to tighten that back up and then uh, save all of that gunk to get off at a later time. Um, that way, I know this this is hose and I can or this hose is tight and I can just spray this all degreaser and water and get everything off here. Um, one thing that I'm looking at right now is while I'm under here and I got some light under here, I've been looking around to see if there's any other leaks. I mean, there's definitely nothing major. You know, there's barely a drip from anything. Um, but one thing I did notice is I do see a little bit. I'll just get this foam on off. Do see a little bit of some liquid here right below the coolant hose and lo and behold I look here and there is a drip of coolant. I can see that it's actually coming out of this hose right here. So it might just be a matter of tightening this down which is what I'm going to try first. Uh, worst case we're going to have to loosen this off, clamp off these radiator hoses so we don't lose um, all of our coolant and probably have to clean this up and, and there's probably just a minor leak here but um, it's just just a coupling right here nothing major um, I don't see any holes in the in the hose itself so it's probably a simple fix but um, those are the kind of things you kind of want to look out for I mean obviously seeing a dark spot like this is gonna uh, be a dead giveaway um, that you got something going on there 
Um, so stay tuned. Probably have another video. Might even make a video about that. It's not not too much to repair there. So there's going to be lots of other projects on this thing. And uh, just stay tuned.